Welcome to the Power Platform Show. Before we chat with today's guest, here's a quick message from our sponsors. Do you need a career coach? I have been working with Microsoft Business Applications for over 18 years and have coached many people to fulfilling careers in the space. If that sounds like something that interests you, please go to nz365guy.com forward slash coaching. Now, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is from Houston, Texas in the United States. He's the head of digital transformation and innovation at Slumber J. Aside from his interest in travel, coffee and innovation, he's also very much interested in solving problems. He's an experienced technology leader with global experience, having worked and lived in four countries, four continents, sorry, seven countries and cross-culture in the energy industry. To learn more about him, you can check out his Twitter handle, Alan Chai. Welcome to the show, Alan. Thanks, Matt. Good to have you on the show. Did I get everything right then? You got it 100% correct. <laughs> Excellent. So, sis, what was that? Four continents. What What were the four? Asia, Africa, Europe, and North Africa, America. Wow. Wow. Incredible. So you, you're a bit of a you're a bit of a celebrity in the Power Platform community uh, in the Microsoft space. How long How long has it been now for you that you have been working with the Power Platform? Actually, not too long. Uh, I started the journey um, early, I was in early 2018, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where I, I started with Power Apps. But prior to mm-hmm. that, I was uh, doing a bit of Power BI. I'm a Power uh, Data guy before, right? I wouldn't say I'm a celebrity. I'm also a learner, right? <laughs> I'm just uh, the same like everybody else. Uh, every day we are learning and discovering new yeah. things, yeah. So true, so true. So tell tell me about your journey, first of all, um, you know, to the four continents, the seven countries. How did you end up in technology to start with? Yeah, um, it is quite surreal because uh, I just actually finished 23 years, or completed mm-hmm. 23 years in the same company after my university in Singapore, actually. I oh. graduated in Singapore and... Uh, got the job and then from there I worked in the field where I actually I was a satellite engineer right? so I, mm-hmm. I put up satellite system on wow. on the ship yeah and bringing email in bringing internet to those folks working in the ship right and then from there it just uh, keep evolving you know from being an engineer I went into I was given the opportunity to do sales business development and then doing operations, doing product development, and it just keep going, right, from from places to places until uh, I think around 2008, uh, that's where I started kind of get a hang on SharePoint back then, right? Uh, SharePoint 2007, uh, version 2007, I think. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's where it started to... uh, grab my attention and my my interest to see, hey, what can I get out of SharePoint, right? It was a pretty interesting platform. And I started to, you know, do all sort of crazy stuff uh, with SharePoint, bringing in jQuery, uh, stripping mm-hmm. out the, the a- uh, ASPX file, right? Uh, kind of like uh, starting my own uh, shadow IT <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. For, the, for the organization. And... Uh, trying to realize the value that we can get out from SharePoint. Uh, that was uh, the early days, right? And then that also started my interest in software. Uh, in, in I wouldn't say I'm a software engineer, but uh, I am more like, how can I use all these great tools from uh, Microsoft to the advantage of uh, the business, mm-hmm. right? solving the business problem? Uh, and then... Uh, spent a significant number of years with SharePoint and then this power platform landed, right? Uh, landed in 2000. Uh, for me, we, we got in touch with power platform 2018, yeah? And very, it, actually it's a very uh, personal uh, event that uh, that that uh, drive me into doing my first app. Uh, we, we had a, we had, 
an incident actually in, in among my my co my colleague right one of them uh, mm-hmm. uh, had a heart attack right uh, uh, wow. unfortunately and uh, passed away and then we wanted to do something different right we wanted to do uh, want to stop that from from happening again so we say mm-hmm. a, a, a friend of mine and I we, we say you know why not we we get our people to have a more Active lifestyle, right? Let's let's do something fun. Let's something that uh, mm-hmm. get people on the go, right? On on the run, uh, do some running, do some exercise, do some cycling, right? And then let them uh, uh, lock their mouths, right? So that we can kind of encourage other to to keep an active lifestyle. So mm-hmm. it was a pretty noble uh, idea. So I I jump on it and. Uh, Then my friend was saying, but by the way, I don't have any funding to do this, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so at the time, I was seeing we, as everybody else has uh, Office 365 at the time. These uh, new things keep popping out in the in the Office 365 waffle icon. Then I saw mm-hmm. this power apps. It sounded like an app, so I say it must must be something there, right? So I told my friend, yeah. my my coworker and say, give me the weekend. I I would. I will go hash it out. Right, I will figure out what this power apps is about, and then mm-hmm. by by Monday, I I got I created a sort of like a Fitbit of our own, right? Whereby we can mm-hmm. encourage our people to uh, do uh, keep their uh, life the uh, healthy lifestyle, and then we set a, a target to say, uh, let's let's get everybody to lock them out. And our target was mm-hmm. to run around Europe, uh, all our offices in Europe in one full circle. That was wow. uh, that was like twenty two thousand miles. I think that was the mm-hmm. target twenty two thousand miles. Uh, so we launched the program, and between two weeks, we we achieved the target. <laughs> so wow. then, yeah, then we say, okay, why not we go further, right? So we keep mm-hmm. it, keep it going, and then within within 10 months, uh, collectively, the whole organization in Europe uh, achieved like three hundred thousand miles. So mm-hmm. it's, that's like going all the way to the moon, <laughs> yeah, um, with some balance. So so it's quite interesting. Is uh, and then from there, you know, uh, uh, as you can see, it's very much like uh, solving a problem using the two, right? And mm-hmm. and we use that opportunity to learn more about this too, and how it can uh, uh, be applied in in our day to day work, right? So, two thousand eighteen is pretty much a discovery year for us. Um, yeah, before we we ramp up uh, aggressively in two thousand nineteen and beyond uh, to to apply the the power platform across our our productivity work, workspace productivity. Wow! Wow! So, tell me a bit about Slumber J. What 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 do you do as an organization? I see you've uh, you, you're quite a la- large um, a company, um, 170 different nationalities, 82,000 people, um, and 120 countries. So that's that's pretty phenomenal. Tell us what do you what does the organization do, and then what has become the resulting journey for Slumber J when it comes to the Power Platform? So, as a company, we we have been. Uh... I mean, we we are as you see, the number is huge, right? We are everywhere. We are uh, almost anywhere on earth that has uh, operations uh, or companies exist. We we are there. We are a company that actually uh, exploring energies, right? Energies uh, uh, source for for the world. Uh, and lately, these few years, uh, we are ex- transitioning to new energy like hydrogen. Uh, geothermal whereby we use the, the 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 heat from the earth core to mm-hmm. to heat up our house right our houses mm-hmm. so uh, which is uh, environmental friendly green right and mm-hmm. we have a hydrogen uh, 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 new 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 hydrogen uh, branches whereby we mm-hmm. we turn hydrogen into as a as energy source for for Uh, houses as well as uh, for for transportation. Yeah, um, we are very diverse. 
So we we hire where we operate. That's what we believe, right? So hence you see there's so many uh, different nationality, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It's a truly uh, very very diverse uh, company, and also we believe in gender balance. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we have a uh, aggressive uh, gender balance targets since uh, I would say 30 plus years ago. It's not new to us. We mm-hmm. aggressively make sure that even though we are in a very heavy industry where female tend not to be interested, but uh, mm-hmm. we set the target to say, you know, we, we want to have a good representation of female uh, in, in our population. And mm-hmm. today we, we are quite, I, I would say in, you know, industry, heavy industry, uh, we are the leader in terms of a gender balance. Yeah. Wow, great, great, great. And so, so from the, you know, from that app, that, that, that was aimed to get everybody interested and, and working out, getting, you know, getting fit. How big is the implementation now that you're running at Slumberjay uh, of Power Apps or, or any, anything on the Power Platform? So uh, to give a bit of a indication on the size, uh, we, we have uh, close, up, I think it's already past 20,000 apps today. In our tenant, wow. yeah. So uh, twenty thousand apps for Power Apps, and then about thirty-two thousand Power Automate, the cloud flows. Yeah, wow. So th- those are huge because uh, two three years of journey with lots of citizen developer where I have been trying to drive internally, uh, okay. get people to be comfortable with the tools. So if you take a look at the thirty-two thousand flows, we are talking about. No, uh, on a daily basis, about two million, two million uh, transaction. Wow! Uh, Power Automate transaction runs successfully on a daily basis, right? Which means uh, the Power Automate has taken over two million tasks that used to be done by uh, human being manually somewhere, right? right? <laughs> and this is not possible to be built by sent by IT, right? Imagine 32,000 flow. You, IT do, do not have that resources to build so many apps, or so many flow, right? So mm-hmm. it's purely crowdsource, uh, citizen developer uh, effort coming together, self-service, right? Uh, to achieve that kind of uh, numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the, annoying. Yeah. That, that's that's uh, how mature it is. Uh, uh, but I would say that it's still very in the beginning, right? It's uh, uh, three years in the in, in, in the journey, and we are aiming for even bigger things uh, in the next two to three years. Wow, wow! As in, you know, for a lot of organizations, you know, that even folks listening to the show, they go and they build one app, and they see that's a big achievement. And but what I've, I'm noticing, and and particularly the last couple of months, there's more and more people looking at the Power Platform as a platform strategy for the organization, not just a, uh, you know, a one or two app or, or a few flows strategy. It's more of a, how do we knit the platform and make it a core business tool uh, across the organization? And you've seemed to have achieved that. Yes. Uh, uh, lately, especially, uh, we I've been driving the community internally in Shambhuji to not look at Power Platform as individual pillar. So mm-hmm. when I have a citizen developer trying to solve a problem, normally I, I the, in the past, in the beginning of the journey, they tend to look, say, okay, how can I solve that problem with Power Apps or with Power mm-hmm. Automate? They look at it as individual too, right? Today, I'm they are start, I'm starting to see the change uh, is due to the maturity and the understanding of the tools. People start to see, oh, okay, that problem, that business workflow, can be resolved by bringing in two, three pillars of the power platform. So working together. So I I, I say I need to capture data. I bring in power apps. I need to report and visualize the, those data. I bring in Power BI. And in the back room, I need some sort of automation. I bring in flow, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So that's my, the, the, the community has started to get comfortable and they are able to bring all these uh, bits, bits and pieces of Power Platform to work together yeah, and extract yeah. the best out of each of these individual uh, uh, services 
to make a, a solution. So that, that's what I call it, uh, uh, going all in with Power Platform, right? To uh, realize the value to, uh, by doing, by using the right tool for the right thing. Yeah. yeah. So so if we were to look in, in inside your organization and look at the the 20,000 odd apps, let's start with those. What, what typically are the apps doing? Are, are they replacing you know, a clipboard-based process or what was in the past maybe an InfoPath form? Are they, uh, what, if you were to categorize, you know, your mix of apps, what are the, the kind of categories do they naturally fall into uh, in solving business problems? So of the 20,000 apps, I would say a majority of it are what we used to do in SharePoint, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, some workflow that we used to do in SharePoint is now being replaced uh, with uh, with Power Apps uh, fronting mm-hmm. it. So the backend they still a SharePoint, but uh, mm-hmm. are, we are replacing InfoPath uh, and some custom forms right into uh, with, with Power Apps. Uh, and then on top of that, it is also like you say, you know, like clipboards kind of a paper form being replaced. Uh, Mm-hmm. And, and converting them into some uh, into data points that are useful uh, that is captured digitally somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So majority of the uh, of the apps are around that in uh, that kind of uh, use cases, and then we have uh, you know uh, out of the twenty thousand, most of it are what I call I call them the productivity apps, right? Whereby mm-hmm. they are they are only impacting a small group of people, yeah, and being used yeah. uh, uh, infrequently, right? Mm-hmm, we, mm-hmm. Then out of that, we have maybe a thousand of them that I consider as production app. So production mm-hmm. app means uh, they, they are being used by uh, more than 50 times a month, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and have been shared to more than two people. So you have uh, a little coll- small collaboration of uh, people working together on that app, right? Mm-hmm. So so those are qualifiers that we put in place to, to capture uh, apps that needs to be sustained properly and uh, needs yeah. to be uh, uh, making sure that they, they perform properly as well, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, and so within that, how have you, you know, to create that volume, you've talked and you've mentioned this a few times, is your internal community. Tell us about your community of, of citizen developers uh, and contributors that you have now within Slumber J. How did you, how did you create a culture for that community? How did you grow it? How do, how do you continue to grow it? How do you continue to evangelize inside the organization and get more followers you know, of 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 building um, or solving business challenges using technology. Mm-hmm. So uh, we started the the whole uh, journey by setting up uh, Yammer groups, right? Yammer groups mm-hmm. of each product uh, with between our our ten- tenant, right? And mm-hmm. and from there, in the beginning, we find a few. Uh, we started off with a few. I call the power user, rather right, the, the slightly more advanced user, to be uh, to be there to share solution, to be there to answer and support uh, questions that are coming from the community. Uh, somebody say, I, I do not know how to you know, update the list. Can you help me? And then they, they bring their, it's, it's almost like a little forum that uh, we see outside in in, in, in PowerS forum, uh, the, the Microsoft ones, but it's just mm-hmm. that we, we run it in Yammer. And in, in the beginning, we rely on uh, a handful of uh, power user in our COE group. Yeah, mm-hmm. they support that. But then we realized that over six, it took us about six months before the community becomes self support each other. Right. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they grow very quickly and then they get comfortable. They help each other. They answer the questions for one uh, for one another before the COE members are able to even jump in. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so, so that, that kind of, uh, that formula uh, will work yeah, for, uh, for most companies. 
especially for uh, technical companies where you have lots of uh, engineers, scientists uh, uh, in, in the population, right? Mm-hmm. So, so that's, that's what we have and it, it, it helps a lot with the population being technical, they're able to you know, uh, pretty much get this uh, local stuff uh, fairly quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. If I keep, uh, I always tell my my community saying that if you can do Excel formulas, you should yeah. have no problems with Power Apps or Power yeah. or Power Automate, right? Or or Power BI, mm-hmm. uh, and and keep it very simple that way. And uh, you 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 then once you identify first of all identify your power user, let it grow, and then after they mm-hmm. grow, identify your champions, uh, your your. Uh, and means expand your power user be, beyond your COE uh, mm-hmm. in the community, identify some key uh, champions that are able to represent uh, their business, but with mm-hmm. the interest of uh, the, the power platform too. Yeah? And they, they will become your catalyst uh, between each of the sub-business. So, so what are you typically seeing from a champion and and how do you recognize them within uh, within the corporate environment um, and and if you like set them free to to spread the word that that type of thing do you have a, a particular award system what what's the structure you have around it so for us uh, I have started this program called the digital special agents yeah mm-hmm. so digital special agents these are uh, the, the champions that I identify through the company uh, strategically positioned in uh, each of the different function or business line. Uh, these, these are individuals that I have to keep watch uh, through the Yammer group. When mm-hmm. someone become uh, active in the group, you, you t- they tend to be pretty easy to, to be identified. You see them answering mm-hmm. lots of questions. You see them uh, being marked with uh, lots of best answer in, in Yammer. And that's mm-hmm. when uh, I, I will then pick them up and uh, reach, them, reach out to them and say, hey, uh, you, you've been identified as a, as a champion. And, uh, and, mm-hmm. uh, and it's also a, a, a mentoring program under myself where I... Uh, I have direct uh, mentorship with each and every one of them, right? Mm-hmm. Making sure mm-hmm. that they, they are able to replicate what I can do uh, in free with Power Platform. So I'm sharing my knowledge and uh, building up this uh, 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 relationship with each and every one of them so that they can also solve problems in their business unit, right? At the end of the day, I, I want to clone myself, right? I want to clone myself with uh, many mini islands around. Yeah. 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 So uh, that, 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 that was uh, my, uh, how, how I started with the Champions program. And today you, you, you'll be able to see a few of them actually pretty active in Twitter world. Uh, I have uh, Agent uh, 008, uh, May, who is a, uh, uh, it's extremely uh, active in the in the power addicts uh, community, helping out with all uh-huh. sort of initiative. Yeah, and I have a agent zero zero one Georgia who who uh, who built one of the biggest app uh, for last year for COVID nineteen, uh, mm-hmm. which which Microsoft picked up and turned it into the crisis communication uh, toolkit for everybody. Yeah, nice. Nice. This is so cool. So you you give them agent numbers internally. So you really do have a kind of a culture that people want to be part of um, inside the organization. That, that's right. So I try to make the the program exciting, not just another champions program, but it needs to be yeah. uh, coming with some exciting recognition, right? So I like um, my agents, they all have their their specific agent code and uh, mm-hmm. and throughout the organization they are recognized by by their codes rather than by their That's first true. name and uh, that also helped them in terms of their career right uh, it, they they get a very high exposure to our corporate um, leadership team and yeah. whenever leadership team has a certain uh, business problems that they need to solve quickly and that's when they knock at my door and say Alan can I Borrow one of your agents, right? <laughs> so yeah. that, that is where I, I send the agents for mission, right? I love it. Has has 007 been assigned? 
007 is special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the James Bond uh, of, of the power platform. That's right. So uh, last year, uh, when a lot of people have been asking me about what happened to 007, so, <laughs> and I realized I cannot give 007 to anybody. I can't give it to myself because I cannot mentor myself, right? I'm not an uh-huh. agent. I am supposed to be mentoring the agent. Secondly, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm M, correct. <laughs> yeah. And then if I give the, the 007 to any of my agents, I will make somebody or everybody not happy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I decided to reserve 007 for other purpose. So actually last year I was, before COVID, I was visiting Microsoft uh, Raymond. Uh, mm-hmm. I was doing a few uh, uh, presentation in the all hands uh, session. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took the opportunity to uh, actually present 007 to Microsoft. Nice. to appreciate the partnership that we have with them and uh, and the trust that we have uh, between Slumberger and Microsoft uh, over the years. And it's, it's, it's a real partnership because we, we really work very closely uh, with the engineering team, with the product team, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I presented the 007 uh, jersey, uh, jersey. Each of them has a jersey. Yeah? So mm-hmm. that, that structure, is, I believe, is frame up somewhere in uh in uh, uh, avanta campus nice nice that's that's so cool I, as in and the fact that you say they have a jersey as well so important it's uh building culture these days are becoming more important than ever in a distributed world how does how does you know remote staff that type of thing affect the building of solutions D- does it impede it has you know through 2020 have you had a, a, an explosive growth in in app building as as more and more people might have been working remotely what, what's been the result for you so uh 2020 has been you know uh challenging for everybody right so mm-hmm. uh, we are no different so uh, in terms of uh, app uh, adoption it has become uh, even much more right in terms of uh, usage of app uh, it's actually an advantage in the pandemic year whereby uh, people has they have to use it they have no reason they have no excuse not to not to do it digitally so yeah. uh, they kind of play to an advantage for us. Uh, but we also uh, took 2020 as a year to apply structure, yeah, apply mm-hmm. uh, stronger mm-hmm. governance uh, in the way we build a solution or apps, right? We, mm-hmm. we harden, uh, we put a, 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 a more structured governance or digital guard real in terms of how our agents or our citizen developer uh, deploy their apps. We say before you deploy your apps, you have to go through these four qualification processes that we have defined in terms mm-hmm. of cybersecurity qualification, your data privacy qualification, your yes. network performance qualification, and also mm-hmm. Uh, your trade compliance, right? Uh, in terms of uh, the app, uh, are they compliance from the legal standpoint? Uh, yes. So we want to make sure that they, these four traffic lights are uh, being checked off before mm-hmm. apps can be uh, uh, can be rolled out uh, to the mass audience. So yes. 2020 uh, was the year that we, we, we strengthened ourselves in terms of the governance and mm-hmm. we want to make sure that uh, we... Uh, with a structure in place, it paved uh, a stronger foundation for uh, for us to move even f- uh, move forward with bigger implementation. We, mm-hmm. A lot of people felt that you know governance means stopping people from doing things, but that is a wrong perception. Governance is to allow the, the organization to accelerate even further, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Without mm-hmm. without falling down or without making mistakes. Yeah. So it's super important to have governance so that you can get more people on board without repeating the same mistake that, yeah. you, that you made uh, in the early years. Yeah. So good. When it comes to adoption, have, have you had any resistance within the organization and how did you, you know, work um, and mitigate that resistance? Um, 
the resistance uh, in the beginning, of course, uh, every organization will have uh, this kind of resistance. People, human being is 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 mm-hmm. is like this, right? It's, it's change change behavior. Every human being has some sort of a resistant level. It's just how soon can you get out of that resistant curve? Yeah. Yeah. So as leader or as a tech uh, advocate, what we need to be uh, aware of when you roll out new technology is to see how can you shorten that that change uh, behavior time and uh, by, you know, for example, you can uh, shorten that by aggressively addressing the concerns uh, of uh, what people has in terms of uh, training, in terms of uh, uh, acquiring the new skill set, right? And also to uh, make them aware why they need to pick up this new skill set, why Excel is not sufficient. Right, mm-hmm. so uh, make them aware of those uh, reasons behind and show them the potential. Show them uh, f- some examples of uh, saying, "Hey, I have these few examples that are used in other part of the organization, and mm-hmm. it has bring this efficiency A, B, C, right? That you yeah. are missing because you are you have not st- uh, you are not on board yet, right?" Showing them mm-hmm. what they have, uh, they, they are missing. Uh, and uh, with that, they will start to realize, right? And ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, is making time, right? So a lot of, uh, I would say, people fail to learn is because they, they fail to make time for themselves to learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're always too busy to, uh, to, pick, to stop and say, learn something and then change the way I do things, right? A lot yeah, of people say, yeah. I'm so used to Excel, I, I, and f- I can solve this problem faster using Excel mm-hmm. in the next 15 mm-hmm. minutes. But if they can s- stop and learn something new, that 15 minutes could be, could be fine, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so within, within the, the organizational context, you know, you, you talked about a lot of citizen developers being involved. How do their managers feel that another part of the business is kind of taking the time or impacting the time of their staff members, do you, get, do you get any resistance or have you really got your executive and management layers on board that this is good for the entire business and, uh, you know, staff should be allowed to invest in these type of app building projects? So we, we are quite fortunate because our leadership are fully on board, right, on this uh, digital yes. transformation vision. And we, we realise that, to survive for the next 10 to 20 years or 30 years, the company mm-hmm. needs to, the company needs to transform. The company uh, workforce, workforce needs to be transformed as well, right? So mm-hmm. we have a top-down approach that we believe in digital strongly. And we want mm-hmm. to invest those uh, training on our people, uh, upskilling our people to, to be able to uh, uh, adapt to this new world, right? So take an example. The company is uh, has has a open policy whereby every year, uh, whenever we run hackathon, right, mm-hmm. uh, employees are allowed to take two days off and just go participate in hackathon, learn new things, do it full time for the two days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the managers. Uh, and any managers uh, who who have people who wants to join a hackathon, they should encourage them rather than discourage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that top down approach uh, helps a lot. So uh, last year we actually organized uh, one of the largest in the history uh, in terms mm-hmm. of hackathon. We have fifteen hundred uh, participation from uh, wow. people participating uh, in the hackathon from mm-hmm. over forty countries. Yeah. Wow. How, how, how do you get people involved? Like, do you put up prize money? Is there, is there bragging rights? What's the, uh, how, do you, how do you create the buzz around an internal hackathon like that? So again, uh, a lot of the things I do, I, uh, we, we, we have to, we, we, we don't spend too much. Uh, it's always sent us working around sensible parameters. So mm-hmm. Recognition, right? So we 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 bring up the recognition, uh, bragging rights for them to be the winners, right? As a mm-hmm. winner, uh, you get to uh, present to the CIO, right, and the, and mm-hmm. the leadership team, 
And also, uh, you get a bragging right of a jersey that say you are the winner of 2020 Hackathon. Right? Nice, <laughs> yeah. nice. Uh, and plus, uh, most, most importantly, the winning projects gets to be sponsored by the CIO uh, to turn them into production, uh, into a proper wow. proper uh, business system, right? Mm-hmm. So, and something that they can call Yes, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so that those kind of recognition, uh, I mean, it's it's not more to, um, uh, from it's not from financial point of view, uh, but mm-hmm. it is a re- cool recognition that say, hey, I built that. That was my idea, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's come out of the? How many times have you done the hackathon now? Two or three times? So we have done it three times. Yeah. So we have uh, yeah. three. This, last year was our third year, and in fact, right now we are starting the. Uh, the fourth one yeah, yeah. Uh, and we have a new set of crew going to learn from the previous crew on how to mm. make it to the next level right uh, and last year because of the pandemic we actually had to uh, change the format uh, quite drastically right with all the mm-hmm. challenges of not being able to do hackathon physically and yeah. people uh, uh, scattered all over the world how do you how do you uh, put them together to form a team and they can work yeah. in their time zone in, a, in that they are not uh, they are not like overstretching in terms of uh, the, the the timing right so mm-hmm. uh, it was a huge logistic uh, uh, effort to 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 make sure that the whole organization is well run right mm-hmm. um, we, uh, we 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 did that uh, with the help from the community right so last year, we actually invited a few of, of our community leaders like Shen Yang came over and uh, have mm-hmm. a session with us. A guy in the queue, uh, Adam and uh, Patrick came over and uh, again did a session on Power BI. And we have Brian Dang, we have uh, uh, Ken Veer and, and a few of the Microsoft folks to uh, the MVP folks to to come and talk to us. We even have Summit Sunny uh, to come in, yeah. to come and yeah. inspire a lot of our people. So, nice. so it, it was uh, pretty cool uh, because I've um, uh, been able to bring the community leaders, the celebrities in, uh, in the community to come and talk to our internal uh, uh, community. It inspire a lot of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Does it, does anything stand out in your mind as as some of the big things that have come out of these uh, hackathons? Now, I might, I'm not necessarily talking about the app or the solution, but even the 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 the, tra- the transformation or the impact it's had on the individuals, the people involved. What are kind of come of this? Because you know some of the stories that really stand out of the success of your hackathons. Yeah. So last year. The hackathon one tr- one trend that I noticed is that the idea has become more advanced. Yeah, first mm-hmm. two years the ideas are pretty simple. The hackathon ideas that come out from from the teams are fairly simple, but last mm-hmm. year's uh, people are uh, taking the step to cross over the advanced stage, whereby they start to think, oh, can I bring in AI? Can I bring in yeah. machine learning? Yeah. Uh, so the idea become a bold, more a bolder, right? In terms of mm-hmm. uh, challenging the status quo and challenging the technical obstacle, yeah. And they dare to try out uh, things like uh, AI builder the, or mixed reality, right? Yeah, uh, which uh, was very promising in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, how the community has evolved and. Uh, has grown right in terms of uh, the maturity of with the two. Yeah, Mm-mm-mm. that's cool. That that's very cool. One of the things you know, a couple of weeks ago, I tweeted around, uh, you know, who's building apps that don't look like Canvas apps. You know, in other words, the UI looks so awesome that um, you know, if you were a uh, an expert in the Power Platform, you'd do a double take because um, you know the investment's been made into the user. Uh, interface and of course then the flow on um on creating user experiences that really well you know for a long time i've said is it possible to create business apps that are addictive you know like gaming apps where you, you just lose hours because you're so into the experience 
can we do the same thing in uh, a business app scenario where rather than, if you like, um, you know, uh, you're battling with user adoption, people just, they can't imagine not using it because it makes them so much more productive or efficient in their role or makes their day go faster, that type of thing. When you think of these things, what do you think about? So for me, uh, the answer is absolutely yes, that is possible. And in fact, it is a standard that we, we practice in, in Slumberjack. Uh, mm-hmm. When I started the whole journey, I did not mention actually, uh, I when just like anybody, when you started with Power Apps, uh, most people get stuck in that three screen app that by default yeah. showing up from Power Apps, the three mm-hmm. screen with the dull blue, pale blue, uh, pale blue uh, banner, right? Mm-hmm. So when I took up uh, the this, this uh, when I did that first uh, fitness app, right? I told myself, I want an app that feels and behave like native apps. Yeah. yeah. And I kept to that motto even up to today. Every single app that I build is always putting the user first, user mm-hmm. experience first, uh, answering what your user want to do with your app. Uh, com- uh, coming from that angle, before you even start building your first button, uh, is super important, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, hence, uh, I'm, I, I, I was actually driving this topic, uh, UX first, in the community back in 2019. And mm-hmm. since then, uh, I've seen significant change and everybody has been uh, following and making sure that uh, putting UX first and do not have to accept uh, this out-of-the-box, uh, you know, the, the three-screen uh, workflow, yeah. right? So give you a few examples. Like today, we, uh, I'm sure many people, many people has used those uh, video portal from, say, uh, Netflix, from Prime Video, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. from uh, Disney Plus, right? We can build all those apps easily. Yeah. And we have plenty of those examples uh, today been uh, repurposed multiple times uh, whereby you have uh, video contents, you have uh, text content, uh, you can present Mm -hmm. them in a very professional uh, look and feel that is not just attractive, but uh, it is efficient in terms of uh, capturing uh, user sentiment. Uh, We we, we do that a lot uh, and we replicate that success uh, formula uh, everywhere. Yeah, mm. uh, most of our apps they always look like professional app. They don't look like uh, out of the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it, and it's super important because when you build an app, the moment you roll it out, you want to first of all attract their attention. And say, oh, that that looks cool. I like it. I want to get try. Mm-hmm. I want to use it, right? And then the second thing after the use is that you want to make sure they come back. To make sure that they come back, your app has to be attractive for them to come back, yeah. right? So if mm-hmm. it's a one-off uh, trying to get certain data from the user and you are not putting effort to attract them back, they will not return. Yeah, Then your adoption yeah. will fail. Yeah. So true. Um, my, last, my last question is for you is, is if you had a, a, a crystal ball and you could look at the next five years and, and the Power Platform... Uh, with all its tool sets and the impact on business, what what do you propose that you might see in that crystal ball? What what does the vision of the future look like for you um, and your organization when it comes to using the power platform? So, uh, in the next three to five years, I for me, I I, I would think that it will evolve into a, a true no code uh, ecosystem, mm-hmm. whereby we do not have to build apps anymore. We tell mm-hmm. we tell AI and say, I need an inspection app. Yeah. Yeah. AI will build an app for you. Yeah. The app is uh-huh. ready, ready to go. And you just need to change the look and feel and, and uh, maybe change the text here and there. Right. So mm-hmm. that capability, uh, I, I would say, is something that will uh, shorten the app making even further. Right. And, mm-hmm. and 
making the adoption way easier yeah, compared to today's effort. Today, I still need an army of uh, citizen developer. I would yeah. say in, in the next uh, three to five years, once we have the AI capability to build app for us, uh, it's going to come in so natural, right? so natural to everybody. Mm-hmm. Just build me an app. I want to run this program. Yeah, yeah. answer a few questions uh, for what kind of program, for what kind of scenario. AI will make sense of it and design and, and go down all the way down to the design for you and have a functional app between a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It's I not, like it. Yeah. I like it. And I, I truly believe it's not a dream. I, I believe it is very achievable. Yeah. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Okay, Alan, I always like to wrap up with a, cu- a few random quick-fire questions. Sure. <laughs> H- here's your first one. What's the best gift you've ever received? Oof, best gift? My kids. Nice. If you could only drink one type of alcohol for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Gin and tonic. Nice, nice, good call, good call. If you could do anything in the next year... And there was like no, no no constraints. What would you achieve? I would like to travel to the Arctic. Nice, nice. It's interesting you say that. There's a bunch of MVPs that have been toying for some years now about how how do we to uh, create a training course that can only be delivered on a ship sailing to Antarctica, and 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 uh, that is aimed at executives, so that their companies would pay for them to go, which would cover then the cost of us to all deliver the course uh, and uh, and go to Antarctic uh, with them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. I haven't achieved it yet. Yeah. Alan, it's been great uh, having you on, on the show and hearing about your journey. Thanks again for coming on. Likewise. Uh, thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, Business Applications MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 Guy. If there's a guest you'd like to see on the show, please message me on LinkedIn and let me know. If you like the show and want to be a supporter of the show, please check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365guy. Otherwise, stay safe out there and see you next time.